By way of quick review, I want to play. So they talked about it last week at the uh, World Economic Forum's meeting in Davos, Switzerland, the imminent possibility of a cyber attack within two years. But I want to play a video once again of Klaus Schwab talking about how he believes that's coming. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. 9-11 affected the world. Um, think about even Pearl Harbor or World War II, these, these huge moments in, in world history. Or even COVID-19 or the 1918 Great Influenza. Everything, everything that we know from modern world history would absolutely pale in comparison, comparison to the devastation that, let's say, a cyber attack that would shut down our entire grid would have on America, or maybe an EMP, or even a solar flare, you know, the, the sun ejecting a coronal mass ejection. What that would do to the world would be so unlike anything that anyone can ed ever study in history books. It would separate time. You know, you see these like zombie apocalyptic movies or <laughs> TV shows about how it says 20 years later and the kid, there'll be a kid in the movie that's only 15, so all he's ever known is that new world. That is truly the difference of history that would take place if something like this occurred. It would literally be a, well, that was before this. We had this before that. We'd have that before. Life was like this. And it, would, it'll, it will stun individuals that didn't live during that time. It will thrust us back to the 1700s yeah. if everything electronically shut down. And once again, like I've said before, the problem with living in the 1700s versus people that actually lived in the 1700s those that lived in the 1700s knew how to survive in the 1700s. We do not. I do not. And that is where we are. And just how easy would it be to take down our grid? There's something very interesting. You know, if there's one person that I, I, I listen to a lot of people, but if there's one person that I play more clips from than anybody else, it's Glenn Beck. And Andrew Bellers and I have talked about this. It's, it's probably happened 20 plus times in the last few years where something will not be on the mainstream media's front page. Yeah. It will not even be on the hearts and minds of Americans or even conservative, you know, Americans that believe in God and know the times that we're living in. And I'll just feel like, you know what? I just, I just feel like I want to talk about this and I'll go to, go to Glenn Beck's website and I'll see that day, he posted about the exact same topic. And I don't know what it is, you know, it's just, it, I'm just telling you something that, that's about my personal life that I just think is interesting, but it's happened so many times, it's almost worth mentioning now, where, uh, you know, it's like, Andrew, I was gonna talk about this, but I just can't, I'm gonna talk about this, I just can't get away from it, I feel like the Lord wants me to speak on it. Um, and then I'll go to Glenn's website, and that day or the day before, he'll post that exact same, and you'll go back months and months and months. He hasn't talked about that certain topic, but the moment I'm like, this is what the Lord's wanting to do, he's talking about that. Yeah. And it's just an interesting thing. So <clears throat> I had a few articles, and I just thought, well, it's just really interesting that I just feel like I want to talk about EMPs this week, because that video last week that we played, um, but there's just not a lot of other material about it. I don't want to just do a, a, a recap of things we've talked about in the past. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe Glenn has talked about this. And the video was published 16 minutes before I had said that. Mm -hmm. 
And it's very interesting. It's with, uh, he's interviewing William Fortune, author of New York Times bestselling book, One Second After, a good friend of mine. I've done multiple shows with William Fortune. I've actually been um, hung out with Fortune, you know, on a vacation. We, I, we drove and hung out with him for the afternoon at his home and, and a, a dear friend of mine. Glenn is interviewing him about just how easy, how incredibly easy it would be to take down our entire grid in America. Go ahead and play that video now. Just recap a bit um, how easy it is to take down our our power grid and the attempts that have already been made. And it's my understanding if we take out nine or ten substations, you can lose the entire grid in America, not for a short period of time. It's not like putting a new telephone pole up. It's for months. Well, uh, remember the great power failures in New York in the 70s and 80s? Yes. And in the one case, it all traced back to one relay switch that short-circuited out. Mm -hmm. That then caused the next relay switch to shut down. That started causing entire systems to go offline to try and protect themselves. Or look at Texas. I mean, you went through it two years ago. Mm -hmm. When the system started to go, it cascaded across the entire state within a matter of minutes. It's all automatically set up. It happens faster than any human could ever deal with. It's just boom, 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 boom of different electronic components. Some may say, oh, the guy next to me isn't working right. I got to shut down. Right. But isn't that to protect the entire system? <laughs> How do you bring it back up? If Texas mm -hmm. had a full meltdown, how do you bring it back up? How do you mean that? I, I'm sorry for being asking such simple oh, questions here, but I know no. I know this just happened in Pakistan. They were doing it for some global warming thing, and uh, they decided to take the entire system down for a couple of hours every night. They turn it off, mm -hmm. and they couldn't turn it back on. I don't know if they still have you know power outages. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Again, we as, as individuals, I'm sitting in my house right now. If suddenly, boom, it went off, how do I turn it back on? Do I go to my circuit box, which which I can barely understand? You know, I'm just an ordinary guy in that respect. The systems become so interlocking and so complex that it exceeds the human capability to bring it back quickly. So it just automatically shuts down. And then how do you bring it back? There's the key. How do you and, bring it back? And that's for a cyber attack, which you told me a couple of days ago, a cyber attack can uh, you know go and shooting one of those uh, substations which we're having mm -hmm. happen now around the country uh, somebody shooting at them can bring them offline but if it's coordinated or even a cyber attack it can destroy those substations um, and China is the only one that makes all of that equipment and it to order it in a in a non-emergency way it'll take you over a year to get it Okay, our major transformers, I believe you and I talked about it two days ago, our major big substation, the, the larger substations, to replace a major component can take two years. Now, you would think, in a nation that realizes it could be facing this, we would stockpile key components. Now, certain things go offline, bang, you put another one in. No, we're in a just-in-time delivery type of mentality. Jeez. And as a result, we don't have stockpiles of crucial equipment to help bring us back online. <laughs>